Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a small lecture on hypothyroidism of the canine. Very, very common as we continually breed these dogs. And in breed these dogs, we get a number of breeds that basically pick up as their first endocrine disease that they inherit is actually hypothyroidism. Very common. Cause the dog to have alopecia pot bellied. Use the animals called to be fat, five, and female essentially, and that's a common hypothyroid phenomenon. One of the ways that we, when we started adjusting these animals as far back as 1982, and we'd go through and we would adjust these animals, we'd find out that all of our hypothyroid dogs had severe amounts of um, atlanto-occipital subluxation in their, in their neck. And of course that doesn't belong there, so we would adjust that out, and then over a period of time these animals would be on thyroid, and unless we adjusted them, they didn't stay adjusted. They would get better and worse and better and worse, so we would adjust them naturally. And once we realized that they weren't getting better, we test their thyroid, find out they're low thyroid, usually low T3. And then we would, of course, adjust them routinely, and then we'd be able to take them off of thyroid, indicating that their problem was due to lack of blood supply to their either pituitary or to their thyroid gland. And so um, a relatively good approach to treating a thyroid dog was to get it adjusted, because we always found atlanto-occipital adjustments right up here, which compromises the blood supply of the pituitary and the thyroid. Okay, fine. The other thing is, once we started to look at around 2003, endocrine disease in general, we decided that to, we could actually uh, stimulate the thyroid cells and also the blood supply to the thyroid and the pituitary. So what we'll do, what we started doing then, is we started lasering these animals for thyroid dysfunction. So we would laser the animal um, on both the pituitary. We would laser both the pituitary under here and also the thyroid also under here or on the side here like this essentially as a means to try to uh, enhance the blood supply. We would use blood supply frequencies 100, 304, and 20.5 and we'd also use uh, 216 cycles per second along the thoracolumbar spine and also we would use frequencies for the pituitary which is 59 and frequencies for the um, uh, thyroid, which is also 59, which is interesting. Both frequencies are the same, same frequency for the same tissue because they have the same embryological origin, which I think is another part of why we explain in the actual advanced and, and basic laser courses that you can find on vomtech.com. If you go to vomtech.com and look at those courses, we can show you extensively the huge amount of data that we have associated with them. But this is one of the ways that we treat these animals for thyroid conditions, essentially. About 70% of these animals can be treated effectively and gotten off of thyroid medication using one or both of these tech methodologies. This has been a lecture on hypothyroidism in the canine. Thank you for watching and please go to the vomtech.com website or call me at 888-935-4866 and I'll give you more information about thyroid care, thyroid function, how we take an animal slowly off of thyroid medication once we start using this technology and what our success rates are. Thank you and have a great day.